I've been having so much fun in this class and I hope that you have too, creating all kinds of different mixed media things. But I wanna leave you with one more project and one more lesson. And this time what I wanna talk to you about is pulling it all together. Because it's one thing to do one technique, but to pull different techniques together, that's a different thing. And I have kind of a simple formula for you to follow. So you could make, we could get completely wild like this wood project here that I've got. At first glance, it might look a little overwhelming or like there's a whole lot of stuff. But when you start looking closely, what you're gonna find is there are elements of, here's my embossed stamping, here's, there's recolored elements, there are different things in here like adding on the metallic, I've added paste with paint and created custom colors. There's a lot of techniques that we've shared here in this class together and explored that can be pulled together to make projects. So I'm gonna walk you through a simple process of doing just that and we're gonna make a card so you can see just how easy it is to pull all of this together. So the first things up, I've got my Tim Holtz dog stamps because they are just so much fun and I always love creating with them and I think we should just have a little party here and play with our stamps. And I'm gonna work with archival ink as I often do because the archival ink is going to not react with any of those water reactive mediums that we've come to be so fond of here in this class. And I'm gonna use this little guy because he reminds me of our little dachshund app. Love my little, love my puppy dogs. Now, if you wanted to, of course, you could add more dogs, you could mask, you could layer, we do all kinds of things like that. But I just wanted to stamp him on this piece of paper to get a feel for what is the point of this project? What is the focus going to be? We're gonna create, it won't be exactly the same, but a card similar to this. Because what I want is to create a card for a fellow dog lover that I think will really cheer her up and make her day. So that is the point. The main focal point is going to be my dog. So everything I do, I'm gonna keep in mind that I'd like to use this dog. On to the third step. What about our background? We need some kind of background. Well, I think it'd be fun to get wild with some paste plus color. So I've got another piece. I'm using watercolor paper. Any kind of heavy paper would work well. And I'm just gonna put a stencil down. Again, any stencil would work well. And some nice, paste here. Now I'm using the paste because as you've seen over and over again, it dries really quick. It's really easy to work with. It's a lot of fun. We're going to have a good time with this project. It's And we don't need to worry when you're going to make a background and you know already, I already have in my head that I'm layering other things. You don't need to necessarily worry about the center or any area where you anticipate covering it up. I'm scraping this down really well because I really want to make sure that I have as little paste on here as possible. Okay, and you can really hear it there. Once you're happy with it, lift it off. It'll just give us that little bit of texture, just a little bit, but not a whole lot. Now I'm going to heat set this just a little bit because I have found that if I do this first, it really helps with the color mediums and with making sure that this paste stays all lovely for us. And then, once it's set a bit, I'm gonna get out some spray colors. And I'm gonna go with some dark blue here. Get some dark blue and spray. And remember, if there's overspray. And then I'm gonna get some water and just add a little bit of water and you can see it interact, mingle. So that's just one color, one spray. If it's, if it's getting stuck, you can get in there at this point, my fingers are so messy. We're not gonna worry about things like getting inky. And let that get all over. You could add more colors if you want, or what I prefer is I'd rather wait and see. I'd rather wait and see how this progresses and if it needs secondary color later on. So I am gonna dry this just a bit, just to make sure there are no really big pools of color. And once it does start to dry nicely, I'm going to set it aside and we're gonna go back to working on our focal point, okay? Now, if you get a lot of color down there, remember you're gonna to want to either cover it up or clean it up. In this case, I'm gonna go for cover it up. 
Now I'm not going to keep this entire paper, but I am going to keep some of it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull out some scribble sticks. These are by Dina Wakely, Ranger. They're really fun to color with. What I like about scribble sticks is I just come in here with my color and I can mix colors, a little brown, a little orange, and then come in with a water brush or a paintbrush dipped in water as I have here and let it blend. Look at that. I can get my rusty shaded little dachshund color go in here and I can continue to color as long as there's color on the brush. Now what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to let it dry just a little bit. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit because I know that as this dries it's going to change color. Some spots are going to look a little lighter and if I'm thinking you know it's not quite the color I want here comes a little rusty hinge on my mat. Scoop it up and add it in. We can mix and match our colors. We can, and in this case, I've got scribble sticks and distress ink. You can mix and match any colors you would like. And it's really fun, I think, to play with the techniques individually. Play with the ideas one at a time. Figure out what you really like. And then go and run wild with it. Now, if I get to this point and I'm thinking, I'm gonna add a little black to his nose here and blend that out. Notice how I don't need very much. The scribble sticks, they really blend nicely and it doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, so if I get to this point and I think, well, goodness, I changed my mind. I wish, you know, I wish the background had a little something. I wish there was a little something more happening. I can absolutely add on. I can think about the techniques that I know. I can think about the products that I have and what would be best suited and what I might want to do. Now in this case I'm thinking I really wanted those watercolors to blend. I really wanted all of that to happen but maybe I want to make some background stamped in distress. Maybe I want the a little different thing. Maybe I need a little bit of gesso as I'm putting here on my background and I don't need to get all the way to the edges because I know I'm going to cut that down a bit but maybe I want a bit of gesso in here in the background and what would that do? Well I know that that's going to create a non-porous surface. I know that that's going to make it so that I can get out those distressed crayons and color in the background in a different way than the dog himself is colored. Now I'll want to kind of hold this up and move it around a little bit to make sure what I have covered and what I don't. I am not going to worry about covering every little bit for this. I am just going to cover some areas in general and the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to place the Distress Crayons in certain zones and then blend it. So if it's not perfect it's going to be okay because we are going to blend. So with the Distress Crayons I will put them around like so. A couple different colors of blues and purple. This is still one of my favorite techniques to do to combine the colors and mix and match like this it is just so much fun. And I'm remembering that it's okay if it doesn't fully cover because once we get going on this it's going to be look a little bit different. And then I'm going to spray just a little bit water, not try to avoid my puppy dog, try to go around. And then I'm just going to come in with my finger here and start to blend. I say start to blend because I may need to use a tool to finish blending out. And I am keeping in mind that the very edges of this card, a lot of the edges of this card will not show. Now once I get it going here, I'm gonna spray, spray one more time here, and then I'm gonna come in with a nice wet paintbrush and finish it off. So I will pull the color down in and really blend it in around the puppy dog. I'm leaving a little bit of white space around him just because I do want him to stand out and I know that this is all water reactive so if I get one part wet the other part is going to automatically want to blend and I don't necessarily want that to be. I may want a little different look. Continue to get fresh water as needed as we learn from our stamping example and we've got just like that a fun background. Now I don't intend to stamp into this. If I intended to stamp into this I would maybe want to leave things a little differently. I would maybe want to have it a little bit thicker or a little bit different but because I just 
want this as my fun background. I don't have to worry about if the distress fully covers in any spots or you know, if it's lacking or if the white is showing through in certain spots. I don't have to worry about any of that for this particular project. I am, as it's drying and as you can see, just kind of going through and making sure the colors are blended. I'm making sure that I'm happy with the results. Not super picky, just, you know, have a little fun with it. And then once you're happy with it, you'll want to let it dry or you could probably just hit it with the heat tool if it's already starting to dry. Now, if your puppy dog got hit with some blues, if it got colored, if you wanna make adjustments, you can make adjustments at any time. I'm not gonna make any adjustments until I get this all the way cut down and mounted onto my finished card because I know it's gonna look different as I work. So to cut this down, you've got a couple of options. You could use a paper trimmer. You could do a lot of different things. If you don't happen to have anything like a paper trimmer handy, what do you have? I am forever looking around at what might be around. If you have a thin box, this is one of my favorites, a metal, thin metal box or even sometimes plastic, lay it down and tear and you will have a white edge. Now, if you don't like the way the white edge looks or it's too much, you can peel more off. Because I've been doing, you can see a lot of that paper is peeling off, which is fine. It's a lot of it's peeling off because of all those color mediums I was doing. When the paper's softer, it's going to tear easier. And that's just another little thing to remember. And then for the top and the bottom, if I want to, I could trim it down a little more. I could cut it down, that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just go right in here because I have these great big Tim Holtz scissors and it's so easy to cut fairly straight. I'll just trim him down like so. And now you can see why I said I'm not gonna worry about all the things happening all around our little dog friend because it's gonna change. When we cut all this off, it looks totally different. So now we can look at, this is still a little bit wet, but look at how this is only one color. But because we applied it when that paste was still wet, it looks really interesting. It looks like multiple colors even. There's different colors and different shades in different areas. Now, once it is fairly dry, if you're not sure or if there is a spot where you think it might not be totally dry, just tap it with a paper towel to check. Now, we're starting to pull things together here. We're getting to the point where we're gonna think about is there are there secondary colors? We have our background. We have our focal point. Are there other colors we wanna bring in? Are there other techniques we wanna bring in? This would be a good time. Remember, we did our lesson on adding metallic accent. This would be a good time and a time where I would consider, do I want to add anything metallic to this? Me, I think so. I think we're gonna squirt it with a little bit of gold, but first, I'm using liquid adhesive because of the texture, but you could certainly use double-sided tape. I'm gonna tack that down with just a little bit of glue. The edges are gonna to wanna to pop up, but before we worry about that, I think I might want the edges to pop up so I can tuck some buttons and things under there. We're always wanting to think about not just how it looks right now, but how is it gonna look when we're finished? Where are we heading to as we complete the project? So that's tacked down, I'm gonna let that be. To add a little more color, I've got my Heidi Swap Gold out and I'm giving it a nice shake and I'm adding some metallic fun to the background, all around, wherever it's needed. This is just a lot of fun to play with. And once that is down, I can think about finishing touches. I can think about embellishments. Are there other things that would add to my project, whatever that project might be, that would work well? All throughout, I've been thinking about what techniques do I know? What do I have that will work well for this? In this case, I think a sticker would be good. I've got my Tim Holtz stickers here, and I just need to figure out where I'd like to place it. I think I'd like to place it down here by our puppy's feet. So I'm gonna add a little more liquid adhesive onto here because when we get all that texture going, sticker adhesive can't always hold up. This is also going to help us tack things down, but not too far, not too much just yet. I'm also gonna add in, this embellishment kit has some great brown buttons, and I think some brown would be a nice contrast to all that blue. I really do like blue and brown together. And this is something I do in scrapbooking a lot too. Just put some adhesive in the middle until you're really sure with what you're doing and how it's going to go, 
then add some more adhesive at the edges of the photo, of the image, whatever it might be, because then you know, okay, well, this is where I'm going, this is what I'm gonna do, now I can add a little more. So that's, it's finishing touches time. I can look at what do I have, what do I like, what do I want? If I wanted to add some more blues, I certainly could, or some more, perhaps some more greens. Things are getting a little messy here. If you're at home, I would recommend between these layers, going ahead and letting things fully dry so that you don't end up with things making a total mess. If you're not worried about it, or if you're me, <laughs> You can always just charge right ahead because I can never wait to finish a project when I'm having fun with a project I'll do it one-handed. I'll keep one finger on here as I work around it and get other things added Here we've got some sequins So I like to make you can see that this is kind of going to be a focal point for us since we've got the all the the words there and everything like that so because that's gonna kind of be a focal point I'm gonna kind of try to Focus there. I'm going to pull most of my embellishments there. I might come up with a secondary spot, maybe. I don't know yet though. We're, we're still kind of working on what works and what looks good here. And if your fingers get too sticky, take a moment or a little bit of water and just wipe them off. If you get a little bit, I got a little too much glue on my hand there. Okay, and then just carry on. And I might like, for example, if I'm doing that corner there, I might wanna put one little button or, or a little trio of things up in an opposite area just to kind of balance things out. And since I have a couple sitting here that I think would look really good, I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. I'm feeling like I'm just about done with this one. I'm happy with where it's at. I'm adding a little more adhesive here and there to really tack down. And I can of course leave the adhesive bottle on top to make sure things really stay put. And there we have it. Simple steps, remember to focus on. You've got your background, you've got your focal point, whatever that might be. You're gonna wanna think about pulling the two together with a secondary color, finishing touches, and most importantly, have fun with your mixed media creating. This class has been so much fun to create and to share with you. And guess what? Now it's your turn. I hope that you will create something new today and be sure to upload it to the gallery and share with us how are you utilizing mixed media in your crafting.